question? Anyone have a question? I have a question, Stuart. Chris? Yes, yes Chris. Stuart, I've been reading uh, in Rudy's book, Spiritual Cannibalism, about as we progress and we get into the realms of time and space, we have to accept that the rules are different and that we're in the void. And I was hoping you could talk about that. Let me just repeat the question. What is happening when we're in the sense of being in the void of time and space? Oh. <laughs> look, I mean, look, we live in time and space. And look what's happening in time and space. Look at all the madness in the world, the craziness in the world conflict, the tension, the joy, the love, everything that goes on in the world goes on within the realm of time and space. Now, the whole point of this meditation is to build a system inside that enables you to get outside the realm of time and space and closer, you know, and really open to what's infinite in the universe. Time and space is finite. You know, and we are trying to build systems inside that can connect us to what is infinite in the universe, that transcends time and space, that frees us of karma, that frees us of all the conflict and suffering that goes on in the world. <clears throat> and, you know, so, I mean, you just have to look around you and you see what goes on within time and space. Uh -huh. We're all given the gift of time and the gift of space. We're born. It's an extraordinary gift that we're given by God. You know, and <laughs> the way people use it is sacrilege. You know, and supposedly we're given the gift of time, space, life <clears throat> to learn how to build a system that can transform whatever we experience in this life into a spiritual life that's the purpose that's why we're born here and of course how many people do you meet in a lifetime that do this you know most people live in a world of total illusion and they spend their life chasing illusion so, I mean, look, <clears throat> two of the most precious gifts we are given, the time and the space to live our lives. And by developing a chakra system inside and an inner life that is strong enough to connect with spirit, we learn how to use both time and space consciously, as a way of building a system inside that is strong enough to attain spiritual enlightenment. I mean, I have a book called Navigating the River of Time, you know, and, you know, it's a metaphor for navigating the river of life. We're given this sacred gift called time. Most of us just piss it away. Most people really just piss it away. And they spend a lifetime chasing illusion. Money, power, the lack of money, relationships, sex, etc. And all and there's nothing wrong with money and you know, success and you know having a relationship with somebody. If all of those things are used as steps on a ladder to get our spiritual in mind, we learn how to experience these things so that we can get free of them. And they don't control us anymore. And then you can really love somebody. You really know what to do with money when it flows through your life. But most people don't. 
They make money and it has only a singular purpose, make more money. <laughs> that's, that's what people do with money. Make money so you can make more money. And I, I look, I played that game. I mean, I was in business for years and it was always about the next sale and the next sale and the next sale and how much money can I accumulate? And, you know, until finally one day I said, Stuart, it's all bullshit. None of that makes you any happier. You know, I used to have a friend, God bless him, he passed on, you know, named Don On. And he used to, you know, I used to go to him for massage. And, you know, and he, one day he said to me, he said, how much money does a person need to get through the day? How, you know, how much money do they need to get through the day? And it's really true, you know, because when you have a certain amount of money, it has only a singular purpose to make more money. Yeah. And then you're drowning in billions of dollars. Drowning in it. And is that one, I think one of the richest guys in the world said in an interview, he's afraid to get up in the morning because his empire might not be there anymore. I mean, it's extraordinary. When I heard that, it was like the Buddha talking to me about how ridiculous it is to chase illusion. And yet, I'd say 98% of the world chases illusion. As I say, there's nothing wrong with money. There's nothing wrong with having relationships. You know, making love is an extraordinary thing. But, you know, one has to learn to use all of these things to get closer to God, to grow spiritually. And all of them can be used for that. This is all just energy. It all exists within the realms of time and space. And one day we drop dead and it doesn't exist anymore. For, you know, it's all gone. So making a conscious use of these things in one's lifetime is a conscious use of the experience of time and space, of karma. And the whole purpose is to build a system inside, a chakra system that allows us to transcend time and space, mm -hmm. to connect with energy that is infinite in the God, call it whatever you want, you know? Infinite energy in the universe. Free, freedom, real freedom. Stuart, may I ask, is that what Rudy meant by being in the void then? When you get through time and space? On the other side of time and space is a void. And you have to go through that void. It's like every time you go through a major change in your life, you go through a void. <laughs> you know, you can barely keep your feet on the ground. So many new things are taking place. There's a void. Well, you got to get into the next cycle and get you know, open to it and get your footing in the next cycle, you know? So the ultimate cycle is the transcendence of time and space. So you go into a void. Well, that's great. Thank it's you. like a mala, you know, you have 108 beads in a mala and, you know, it's like 108 lifetimes that one goes through in order to become spiritually enlightened. Does anyone else have a question? Thank you so much. You're welcome, Chris. Good question. Does anyone else have a question? I hope it's clear what I'm talking about. And and don't worry about this if you don't experience it or it's beyond. It's something you literally in your life and in your growth that you literally grow into it. And you don't even know when it takes place, but suddenly you're just seeing things in a whole different way, living in a whole different way. Your priorities change.
you know, I have a lot in this next series of pieces I'm putting on my way. There's a line in there I really like. It's, the voice of the turtle is much louder than rage. You know, and I think that's what this is all about, learning how to connect with silence. With that part of oneself that's at peace with oneself. That's free of rage, that's free of anger, that's free of all those emotional things that drain us and take our lives away. Does anyone else have a question? There would be two hands. Okay, there'll be meditation tomorrow evening. God bless you all. I hope you make it a priority <laughs> to come and build a spiritual life for yourself. So bless you all and thank you. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you Stuart. Good night. Good night.